chose this topic, right? Okay. So, from my experience, I am coding from I think six years, and I am testing from last one year. Okay, that's my experience with testing. Okay. And uh, at my work, I also it's not like this me working. I work with a team. So I work with a team that doesn't use to code, then with a team that used to code. So we have a team of four to five people. And that said I also contribute to open source projects. Where it's not just three people who are contributing, there are thousands of people who contribute. Okay. So I've seen all the circumstances where uh, people are writing code. I've seen a code from starting to beginning, from prototyping to actually going to the production and then pay. So I feel the need of so when we hire a developer or when we just talk to anyone in the interview, what I see is they know everything, but when you ask for testing, okay, it's fine, I never do it. Right? And I can guarantee like without asking anyone, like the audience here, right? I don't know how much time you've been like testing or not. 90, more than 90% people don't use test method. They don't even run test when they contribute in open source code. They just take it for granted. Okay. Those of you test right now on a regular basis, like daily, this way is the matter. Now if you calculate the percentage of it, like Less than 95%. Okay. And given that scenario, what I feel after my six years of experience, what I feel is before writing a code in a particular language, one should be taught to write tests. Okay? It's not I'm talking about test driven development, but it's about just the way of uh, developing something. Okay? Once you're able to write a test, you will be able to write, like you will be able to solve any problem in any language. Doesn't matter. Even if you don't know programming, you will be able to write a program from like, scratch. Because you know what is the output, right? The predictability will test. So that's why I chose this topic. And just to introduce, okay, this is not something you learn after college. It's something that should be taught in the first year of your college. Okay. So that's it. Uh, I think I already introduced myself to the screen and everything. You can uh, follow me on Twitter for any kind of questions or all. You can go to the website. This is what I do. Just follow my life. Okay. Moving on. The goals. There are testing, right? Everyone does it. You cook food and you test it. Right? It's all manual. Testing you have to end, right? When you are learning to walk, right? Even though you just test, like it's infinite. Good. But in software industry, how is testing used? Is it being done or not done? Why should you test the software or like what is all the thing in software industry? Testing, testing, testing. Everyone just talks about their talk, testing or development, behavior development, uh, behavior driven development, stuff like that. But when I go and ask people how many are you testing? No one. Okay. They test. I'll tell you that it actually is test. But that's not the way you should be testing. Okay. So there are some guidelines here that how you should be testing. Good. And when you're testing, right, so it's just like programming, you're writing a bunch of program. Or like you're testing, it's a kind of algorithm to test also. How should go about like testing it? So another agenda. Someone said something like this. So each word is important here. Right? Code without tests. So you have to understand what is a code, what is a test, and what is a design. Right? This is whole of the software design. So the right chapter is one of the like the earlier developer in Django, the developer, 
and you think you will not be too late for us. This is the, today is the 10th birthday of Django. Also, it is 10th to 12th of Django. That's it. This is the goal, like, right? I am trying to understand what this statement is all about. Why, why do they care about to say something like that? So, when you write code and you don't write the test, there are two things. Either the design is wrong or you write the code back. I am talking about the product here. Okay, also. So, here is what happens and like what I understand is software testing or software in general. Okay, and also to try to find out the analysis between like, what is testing in real world and what is software in real world, software project in real world, analogy, right? Okay. So, software project is designed, so if you are a product guy or if you are someone a startup guy, you will design a software, you will say high level, I want to do this, right? I will be able to chat, I will be able to chat with, you don't basically say thousand users per day, just say, I want to chat, I want to design, right? I want to design a system which solves a problem. So software is all about that design thing. So similarly like you want to have a house, right? Right? So you go ahead and you dream about it. Okay, I want to build a house, right? It should be this much, this many people should be able to accommodate it. It should live like this, blah blah blah, it should have that much materials, functionality, bathroom, kitchen, everything. So let's uh, have treat software as a possible. Then, when you have a housing project or for a software, you have a dream. How do you bring it to reality? So what you do it is by writing code. Good? So, good. so, the design is implemented by the code. So, code is the implementation of your design. Make sense? That? So, the design cannot be like overall tested, right? I want a house. How do we test it? But you can test, okay, what are all the breaks? What is the durability of that break? What is the durability of the column of the stuff? Right? So what you test is a code. You can't test a design. You can't test all the software. So if you think about like testing a software, it's impossible. You kind of have to be impossible. How can you test a house? You can't. Right? But you can test a wall that it can take so much of pressure, it can take so much of you isolate the testing part. You test individual break, you test individual flow. So, here the point is, this can be only done for the code. So, coming back to the topic, what is code, what is test, and what is design? So, if you don't design your house in a way, or if you plan all of your housing project in a way, it's very difficult to test also. Okay, so your design specification, it tastes the test. As a developer, I can't write right test because many parents are not clear. What do you want to do, man? Tomorrow, someone comes and says, okay, I don't want to do this. Just try something like this. So, where is the problem? The design and things are not clear. So, you can't test problem. What is the expected here? How many people should be able to try? What is the minimum number of users should be there in the group? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, the problem that happens if you think about testing a house while you're building, it's the same as you are testing the software. So now if you today want to test a house for durability and everything, the concept that you apply to do that the same concept you apply to do the software. What is integration test, unit test, those are technical tests. Anyways, if you have to be able, this is what's the approaches and how they feel about it. I've written at length on my that article by the morning. So you can just go ahead and read it. So that is all the relation to the real world and everything. Fine, so why should you test it, right? Like, okay, I want a house, I built it, I can live in it, right? So, I will test. I want a software, if there is some developer, you can build it, and it works. So, what do you need to test it? Right? So, you know it, or you don't know it, you are actually testing it. So, how do you test it? The first thing the developer, how do you test it? They open a terminal or they open a web browser, manually enter some data. Okay. 
and they see the output is correct. If they are happy, they test it to stop and it's shipped. Okay. Another way you test it is you have a QA team which just go through everything to make sure everything is working. The guy who needs a house goes ahead and tests the house by looking at it and saying, okay, I want the uh, kitchen, there is a kitchen, the best past, happy, thank you, the house thing, thing is complete, right? Now the problem comes with the software, you know the software, you should be software and you have a startup which is like, okay, fine, investors are happy, they are happy. Tomorrow you go ahead and say, I want to add another kitchen in this house. Right? Or another thing in this house, I want to paint the house or I want to put a ventilator. Right? You want to open a wall by the side of it. How do you ensure that okay, by opening that another door in the house, I am not destroying the existing house, it won't collapse. Right? Then you do another test. Then actually you do manual test again. Right? That's painful. I mean, Nobody knows the specs, nobody knows anything and you are actually destroying the house by testing. Because the house is live, the production tool. Right? Now, in software industry, it's cheap to okay, you can duplicate stuff, you can get to stay in service stuff. But think of it, how costly it is. It takes time. Right? But if you have a test, you run the test, you do some modifications, you run the test again. Even if it takes like 5 minutes, it's fine, it's repeated, right? So another thing that it does is you know that okay this thing works repetitively. So that's why you should write this. You know that this house is going to sustain this much of weight because you have to test in some isolation or something like that. Okay. Another thing is saves time because manually every time you are entering on the browser and entering the number, you are typing everything every time, right? It kills time. Whatever you are doing, just write in the code. Very simple fashion and code. So it saves time, it doesn't take your time. Okay. So it is like even a small project, just write it test instead of writing manually going to the terminal and just like find out. Do it better code. You can't explain it like right now with the example, but if you have a test, your bricks are better, you are organizing, you are doing, you are structuring everything in a nice way. You are building the house in a nice way. You have built uh, isolated components, well isolated separation between the things that makes the code like better. And since you are testing every time, every time, every time, some of modify something, the. Uh, I'm sorry for you. So, it helps the software live longer. What happens if you build a house and then you go and someone else purchases it? It doesn't know like what to do with the house. They can't do anything. And you don't know actually how much time, like one year or two years or three years is the duration of the house. But if you have a test, that test will give this whole system works for 20 years, right? So it makes anything live longer when you are like testing. Testing can be automated or manual. It's all of testing. It makes everyone happy. And we need this So, it makes everyone happy. Okay. I'll tell you why. So, what happens is, I ship code. I've been like doing for three years, at least professionally. So, when I say something, right, and tell it to the, okay, I have to be in this step. So, I try to So, it makes everyone happy because once I say something is working, I raise the expectation of the team that is there out checking me. And when I say something is working, I have a test that checks it's working. And I can with confidence say that this is working. They don't get frustrated because it works. They have tested it. So, everyone is happy. I post code when I am going home. So, my code deploys when I am traveling from my office. That's the level of confidence you should get by your design. Okay, I know the existing thing is not breaking, there is no revision, nothing. So, yeah, that saves me time, I do other stuff with that time. Okay. So, just like 
we were testing a house. Like, so imagine thinking, how can we test a house? There's so much, like, so much cost and blah blah blah. Right? So, yes, debugging, sorry, debugging is hard, testing is easy. Once you have test written and all, it's kind of easy. Debugging is like you put the middle, blah blah blah. It's hard. Exactly. But doing it right now, here's the hard part. If you start writing test, you'll see that it's easy to write test. Okay, so the hard part is for when to test the code. No good. Like, poor word for it. No help in logic. As soon as you can. You could say, write the test, then write the code, write the code, then write the test. Don't write the test until you have been ready. Because the specs are not clear. What I'm saying is write the test as soon as you can. You delay, you won't be not able to write the code because yeah, just to write. Why do I need to write the test? So I think I've written the code for it. And I tell you think further like how it helps you write a better code. So if you're not testing at that like instantaneously, what you're doing is you're basically reducing the value that a test provides you from the beginning. Ultimately, you write a test when you are trying to modify a house. That is not the house you build. But if you just write the test, when you are building the house, you will get more interest. It will save So, that is how to write up. How do you write a test? You come up with things, right? So, again, the hyper logic, there are so many things to test. You need to test your tool, you test your house, you test your cycle, that it works, right? Everything is there. If you want to test your cycle that it okay, works the way it should be working, right? How do you test it? Use some tools, use some tools, use some tools, right? So that way, in software also, there are tools to make your testing very really easy. You don't have to write some support. I'll show you at the end. What is the simplest thing you can do? What is the thing you need to keep in mind to test? Especially in Python. If you are testing in like JavaScript frameworks or other things, it's Difficult. Primarily because of the tool. Okay. So, what is this? Just know about all the tools available. Okay. Keep them like practicing and practicing them. If there is no available, try to make it to all this. Try to automate it. It will take time in the beginning. But yes, once you have written a code for one section of the stuff, you can just copy paste the same logic. In Python, it's very easy. Like, it would not have been doing the same thing. So, I write two lines of code in actual code, and I actually write 20 to 50 lines of code for test. I don't feel bad about it. I think it's okay, fine, there's this. It's like this much. You don't go higher detail than the stuff like that. But yeah, sometimes you have to mess around with it. But yeah, that's how it is. But the benefits that you get is far longer than like, far more than what you invest in like debugging and finding those testing tools and come up with a solution for testing particular users. So we covered all this stuff, what is test, why is the right test, how do you write test, when should you write test? Okay. Explaining things is kind of simple. It's so it's simple, right? The only problem is the tools and how do you write the test? Nobody knows about it. Okay. Anyone knows I need to write test, but how oh man, there's so complicated system, there's so much, there's so much, like, the building is like 20 stories high, how can you test it? Right? So, yeah, so this is the whole thing you should keep in mind while you actually write test. So, these are the golden rules, okay? So, when you're trying to come up with a tooling or anything, right? So, these are the five things you should try to optimize. Command optimize, okay? So, first thing is try to automate whatever you are testing. Okay? You can test it manually, but try to automate it. Like, have a continuous integration server, so you don't have to write the command to actually test it. It will test it for you automatically. Right? Write a code, up on the server, not only test it, so it's automation. Don't go ahead and type 
in the browser the URL and then send a post request or anything. How do I do it? How do I do open the browser? There are so many browsers available, headless browsers and everything. So automate that whatever you are doing. So it's just it is automated. Don't worry about it. Okay. Second thing is it should be fast. Why fast? Because if you are testing a house and it takes one year to just test it, very Useless to me. If you are a building space center, right? And it takes you five years to just test it. It's useless. Makes sense? So another psychological reason is if your tests are running in like 15 minutes, your developers are not going to run it. And when they are not going to run it, they are not going to run it. Have you tools that runs the test program? Or tries to Another thing is like the test, when it runs, right, it should be reliable. It's not like, so it's not how you write a test. Okay, don't put random stuff there. Be predictable about it. Okay, don't generate random number of users in the database and stuff like that. Okay, you know there are two people in the database, just test with it. So the test should be predictable, reliable, that you trust the test. It's a simple enough. So whatever you do, like your testing cycle, your test should be reliable. Okay. And for it. So when you are writing the test, include comments, write in simple language. And for it also means that the specs are clear and you are writing the test. It's not like it's so complicated that you don't understand what you are writing. Okay. So you should be writing very simple, informative. So that even the product guy comes in and sees the test and he knows what the key, uh, feature that is available in the system. How the analytics is gathered and stuff like that, what is the algorithm for implementation. So those should be all written in a way as if all the features are there. Okay. So the features that are documented as a test. It should be focused. Like, you have test on seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay. So focus means if you are testing, right? Are you focused on what are you testing? Are you testing the strength of the brick? Are you testing the wind speed? Are you testing the strength of the wall? Right? Are you testing how many people can live in this house at a particular moment? Right? So, when you are testing, just be focused on your testing. Okay, there's seven, it, this room cannot accommodate more than 70 people. That's the maximum capacity. So, it is focused and isolated. If you are testing with the strength, test the strength of the brick, press in an isolated way. Okay, set up a lab somewhere and press it to finish the whole thing. It should be focused. What are you trying to test? Don't test everything at the same time. You can do the point integration test, but yeah, try to manage and be focused. What are you trying to Are you trying to test the whole of the system or are you trying to just test the brick? Be focused. So, those are all about like, the generals of testing. I hope I was able to like little bit convince you like today you should just start testing. But saying is easy doing is kind of then you again go and say oh, oh. don't write it. So let's stick to one language called Python. It's very simple. It's like English. So uh, like I said, right? How do you test? The tools that will be test. Right? So in Python, you know, if you know the tools, will you be able to test? You don't know the tools? Sorry. Tool. If you know the tools, can you follow all the principles? What are your best tests? Will you be able to write a test? Just do like no hard philosophies or nothing. Just check your things. Is it the best that you're writing? Is it complicated? Is it fast? Is it reliable? Is it complicated? Is it important? Run the checklist, keep it by your side, you're done. So, yeah, so far as in Python, you're able to know the tools and all, there are so many, every people just come out with the tools and all. If your interpreter itself is a tool, you just open the interpreter, import your function that you implemented and test against it. If I pass this parameter, what is now? Right? If it doesn't follow the philosophy, you're automated. Right? If it is not fast, it is not reliable because every time you don't know what is going on. Focused, it may be, yes, it is focused because you are testing a particular functionality. Right? 
there's a problem with it. I'm not saying writing the code of test is a testing. Testing is anything in your testing. But it should follow these things. So yeah, so a little more tools and all. There are two kinds of tools. This is one tool that helps discover where are all the tests present. Like to write some tests. Someone needs to find out where is the test, where the hell is the test. Right? So this is one category of tools. That tools help you discover in your code base where are all the tests are right. Okay? It finds them and runs them. And like it cleans up after you're done with it. So these tools will create a database for you whenever you're starting a test. It will delete that database. For each and for each and every test, it will actually clean up database. If you have five functions, it will actually delete the database five times, it will create the database five times. It does everything for you when it is that you want to do. How do you do? Actually, do it is that you go into the terminal and say, okay, create database, there is MySQL database, and you populate some data and all of that. So, some of the stuff like creating the database, installing the database, closing a file, blah, blah, blah. creating all the configuration, just all that. Unit test. So, these are some of the tools. You can go look up at Google and stuff like that. I will pick up one of the recommendations from here. Okay, there are so many things. So, they like five test, unit test is sent with the Python, you don't have to install it. There is no there is docs, Django has this one test discovery and other. Blah blah blah. And yeah, okay. So many things. Okay, so, so, so many things. Second thing is like the tools, right? Once you have discovered and applying the code, there are some of the libraries that help you write the test in a better way. For example, do all the test functionality that after two months the Google code expires. How do you test it? Will you wait for two months? Will you put a sleep on the stuff? No, right? Now, please, based on the hard use case, you don't know how to test after two months, right? So, there are different kind of tools like FreezeGun. FreezeGun okay. basically what it does is touches the data in the system. Like, it just does something and you can just say, run this code after two years. What happens? What is the behavior of my system after two years? So you just say with freeze time, give it a time, and it will actually go, and whole of your system will actually behave at it as if it is running after two years. So you will see the token has actually expired after two years. Now you are interacting with like networks and systems like that, where you don't know the whole thing. You interact with Facebook. You don't know the things. So, Foxes are there, then you're mocking. So these are the tools inside your test that helps you write actually. So you should know about this. Okay. Huh. So that's kind of all for the presentation part. How's that here? Yeah. Awesome.